Well, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, this is Joe McGee with Walk Through the Bible. We're going from Genesis to Revelation in chronological order as it happened. And so today we're in Genesis chapter 6. And they've made so many great stories, TV programs, and movies about this part of the Bible. Judges is loaded with great men and women of God. Uh, Israel would sin, they'd repent, they'd sin, they'd repent. They repented, God gave them victory, then they'd sin, they'd go into captivity again. And it's just a vicious circle. But what these stories are, people that God would raise up, you know, like Deborah, and raise up one person, and finally Israel would follow. But when the one person finally died, Israel would go back into sin. And so we're prone to follow a leader. We don't know how to lead, follow God on our own. We want somebody to lead us. You know, in the last days, that's what the Antichrist will do. It, it'll be a form of God. And people say, please, Mr. Antichrist, take over. Tell us what to do and where to go and how to worship. We don't want to do it for ourselves. We want somebody to tell us how to do it. And he'll deceive most of the world. But no, we're Christians. We're not deceived. We, we're children of the Most High God. We hear his voice, a stranger's voice we will not follow. And so we're promised a blessed life on an alien planet with opposition. We're promised to be more than conquerors and overcomers. So the Bible's full of stories who did that. So today we got a great story. Judges chapter 6 and verse 1. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Verse 1, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites were hiding in caves uh, for themselves in the mountains, caves and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian and uh, Amalek and the people of the east uh, would attack Israel, camping in the land, destroying the crops as far away as Gaza. And they left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all their sheep, all their goats, taking all their cattle, all their donkeys, these enemy hordes coming in for their livestock and their tents would attack like locusts. They arrived in droves of camel, too numerous to count. They stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. I read that fairly quick. Basically, the enemy came in and, uh, took over their crops, their farms, their houses, uh, knocked on the door one day, said, hey, we want your house, get out. And so Israelites are leaving their homes, going up into the hills, up into the mountains, living in the caves. They don't have a farm, they don't have a crop, they got no vegetables, they got nothing. They've been driven out. They just gave up. They didn't resist. They didn't fight. So when they cried out to the Lord for help because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians, from all who opposed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live. But you've not listened to me. Then the angel of the Lord came out and sat beside, uh, beneath the great tree at Orpha, which belonged to Joash. Gideon, the son of Joash, was stressing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. Or just, he's got a few grains growing out there, so he's grabbed them. He's down in a hole, and he's stomping them to get the grain seeds out to make some flour and to get him something to eat so he doesn't starve to death. So uh, he's stressing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Hello, you mighty men of valor. The Lord is with you. Now, I'm assuming Gideon's never seen an angel. We don't know, but I'm just assuming he's never seen an angel. He's in the hole, hiding from the Midianites, trying to thresh out enough wheat to make enough flour to make enough, make him a bit so he doesn't start to death. And an angel lands next to him and says to him, Hello, you mighty men of valor. Oh, that's really good. And so um, uh, he said, The Lord is with you. Sir Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't I say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. 
Then the Lord, then the Lord turned him and said, "Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you." So Gideon's hiding in the hole because he's starving to death. An angel shows up, said, "You're the deliverer, young man. Go, I'm sending you." <laughs> and so, but Lord Gideon replied, "How can I rescue Israel?" My clan is the weakest of the whole tribe of Manasseh. I am the least in my entire family. Um, now, I've had so many people do this. I think, you know, you think God's calling you. God, why would you pick me? I'm not the smartest in my family. I'm the shortest. I'm the smallest. I'm the poorest. I'm the dumbest. I'm the least educated. Why would you use me? Well, God said he uses the weak things of the world to confound the wise. The Lord said to him, I will be with you. And you will destroy the Midianites as if you are fighting against one man. Get him replied. If you are truly going to help me, show me a sign to prove that it's really the Lord speaking to me. Don't go away until I come back and bring in my offering to you. <clears throat> so he's acknowledged this is God talking to me. What do you need? Well, I need to get him an offering. He's wanting to help me, so I need to give him something. He answered, I will stay here until you return. Gideon hurried home, cooked a young goat with a basket of flour and baked some bread uh, and had some broth in the pot. And they brought the mountain presented to the angel who was under a great tree. The angel of God said to him, place the meat, the unleavened bread on this rock, pour the broth over it. Gideon did as he was told. Then the angel Lord touched the meat and the bread with the tip of the staff in his hand and a fire flame up flamed up from the rock and consumed all that he had brought. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was truly the angel of the Lord, he cried out, O oh, sovereign Lord, I'm doomed. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Verse 23. It is all right, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid. You will not die. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and named it Yahweh, Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. The altar remains in Oprah in the land, the land of Abraham to this day. What do you call it? Yahweh Shalom, the Lord is peace. It's good. That night, the Lord said to Gideon, take a second bull from your father's herd, the one that was seven years old, <clears throat> pull down your father's altar to Baal, cut it down, cut down the Asherah pole standing beside it, because he's got his father's a demon worshiper, a devil worshiper, but he's left God. Cut it down, build an altar to the Lord your God up here on the hilltop sanctuary, laying the stones, kept on the altar, use the wood from the Asherah pole you cut down. So God and Gideon took ten men as servants and this little commanded. But he did it at night because he was afraid the other members of the father's household, uh, of the people in the town would see him. <clears throat> Verse twenty eight. Early the next morning. As the people of the town began to stir, someone discovered that the altar of Baal had been broken down, that the Asherah pole beside it had been cut down, as there, and a new place of altar had been built on its remains, that the bull had been sacrificed. The people said to each other, who did this? After asking around and making a careful search, they learned that it was Gideon, son of Joash, Bring out your son, the men of the town, demanded Joash. He must die for destroying the altar of Baal, for cutting down the Asherah pole. It's about to get nasty. <laughs> but Joash shouted to the mob that confronted him, Why are you defending Baal? Will you argue this case? Whoever pleads this case will be put to death by morning. If Baal truly is a god, let him defend himself and destroy the one who broke down the altar. From then on, Gideon was called Jabal, which means let Baal defend himself because he broke down Baal's altar. They renamed him. Well, yeah, well your name, you know, being Baal defends himself because evidently he's going to have to. Verse 32. Soon afterward, the armies of Midian, Amalekite, and the people of the east formed an alliance against Israel across the Jordan, camping in the valley of Jezreel. Then the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with power. He blew a ram's horn as a call to arms. 
and the men of the clans came to him. He also sent messengers throughout Manasseh, Asher, <clears throat> Zebulun, and Naphtali, uh, summoning their warriors. And with all of them, they responded. Then Gideon said to then Gideon said to God, "If you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me in a way. I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight. If the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, I will know that you are going to rescue me as you promised, and that is just as mentioned. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed the fleece, and water came out of it." Then Gideon said to God, please do not be angry with me, but let me take one more request. Let me take the fleece, lay, lay it here again tonight, but this time let the fleece remain dry and the ground around it be wet. So that night Gideon did, uh, the Lord did as Gideon had asked. The fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. So he knew God's in this thing. Chapter 7, verse 1. So they saw that Gideon and his army got up early and went as far as the spring of Herod, and the armies of Gideon were camped north of there. So the Lord said to Gideon, You have too many warriors with you. If I let you fight Midian, the Israelites will boast that they saved themselves by their own strength. Therefore tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid, leave the mountain and go home. So... 22,000 went home, leaving 10,000. So he's got 32,000. He still has a smaller army than the enemy out there. So I said, well, God says, well, tell us how many I'm afraid. If you're afraid, you can go home. Hey, anybody scared today? <laughs> and so 22,000 men raised their hand. Okay, you can go home. So 10,000 are left. <clears throat> the Lord said, no, there's still too many. Bring them down to the spring, and I will test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. So when Gideon took his warriors down to the spring, the Lord told him, divide the men into two groups. In one group, one group put all those who cup water with their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. And the other group put those who kneel down to drink with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 drank from their hands. Now what it means is, Send the ones you got left down there and have them bend over. If they bend over face down and suck water up like most normal people would in the stream, you're going to do well, I'm going to suck the water right from the water. But if they set their heads up and they just dip their hands so they can still look around, as a good soldier would, stay on alert. If they dip with their hands, those are the ones you want to keep. So the Lord said to Gideon, hmm. Only 300 men drank from their hands. All of those got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. The Lord told Gideon, with these 300, I'll rescue and give you victory over the Midianites. Send the others home. So Gideon collected all the provisions, all the provisions and the ram's horns uh, with the other warriors and sent them home. But he kept 300 with him. So he's gone from 32,000 to 300. 32,000 to 300. He said, God. I don't have enough men to do anything with. No, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. He said, uh, the Midnight Camp in the valley down below, get in that night. The Lord said, get up and go down to the Midnight Camp, where I have given you victory over them. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant, Pira. Listen to the Midnights, <clears throat> what they're saying. And you'll be greatly encouraged. Then you'll be eager to attack. So Gideon took his servant, went down to the edge of the enemy camp, the armies of the Midian and the Malachite and the people of the East settled in the been like swarms of locusts, so many of them. Their camels were like grains of sand on the seashore, too many to count. So Gideon crept, just as a man was telling a companion about a dream. The man said, man, I had a dream last night. In my dream, a loaf of barley bread came tumbling down into the Midianite camp, and it hit a tent, turned it over, and knocked it flat. His companion answered, your dream can mean only one thing. God has given Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite, victory over the Midians and all its allies. Verse 15, when Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed to worship before the Lord. Then he returned to the Israelite camp and shouted, get up, for God has given you victory over the Midianite hordes. And he divided the 300 men into three groups, gave each man a ram's horn 
and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he said to them, keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I get home, uh, as soon as I get there and those with me, I will blow the ram's horn. When you hear mine blow, you blow your ram's horn all around the entire camp and shout, for the Lord, for the Lord and for Gideon. So it was just right after midnight, after the changing of the guard, when Gideon and the 100 men with him reached the edge of the midnight camp. Suddenly, they blew their horns, their ram's horns, broke their clay jars, and all three groups blew their horns and broke their jars. And they held these blazing torches in their hands above their heads. And the horns in their right hands, they blew. And they shouted, the sword of the Lord and for Gideon. Sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Each man stood at his position around the camp and watched all the Midianites rushed around in panic, shouting as they ran to escape. When the 300 soldiers saw the has blew the ram's horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their own swords. And those who were not killed fled to places as far as with Bethel. So Zerahim said, we're going to chase them. So Gideon sent for the warriors of Natali, Asher, and Manasseh, who joined in the chasing the army of Midian. Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country. Abibers would come down and attack the Midianites, cut their heads off uh, and with the shallow crossing. <coughs> so all the men of Ephraim did as they were told, and they captured Orb and the two Midianite commanders, killing Orb uh, at the Rock of Orb at, Zerm, at, the, at Zobab, and they continued to chase the Midianites after the Ishmaelites brought all the heads of Orb and so Gideon, who was then who was then by the Jordan River. So basically, they chased all night, and they killed all the enemy. The 300 went and got, they're all the relatives. Hey, guys, we got something strange going on. You 30,000 that left, come on back. We got victory happening right now. And so they came back, and they spent all night chasing the enemy. Who about you, in, the, in the valley, they start, the enemy, when they blew the trumpets and waved the torches, the enemy so panicked, they started killing one another. They, they started stabbing their buddy in the tent next to them and started killing one another. They just panicked. They didn't know what's going on. I mean, there's no cell phones. There's no flashlights. They're panicking. They don't know who their enemy is. They just know he's around them somewhere, and they just saw the torches all around them, all around the hillside, and the trumpets blowing. The, oh, my gosh, it's a horde of an army. No, it's just 300. It just looked like a whole lot more. And so God gave Gideon a great victory. Now, it was Gideon. He was a wimp hiding in a hole. But the God said, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. God didn't call Gideon what he was. Gideon was a wimp hiding in a hole. He's been run out of his house. His family's run away from their home. But called, hello, you mighty man of valor. God called Gideon what he was going to become, not what he was. I tell parents all the time, don't call your kids what they are. Call them what they're going to become. Hello, my young daughter. You are a princess in the family of God. Hello, son. You're a prince in the family of God. You're a mighty people of valor. You're going to be the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Everything you set your hand to is going to prosper. And that's what God had planned. So it's going to be a great victory, and it's going to be a great time. So take time and read a story to your kids. Doesn't take long. Get your nice Bible translation and just, just sit down. Doesn't take five minutes. As long as I did here, maybe 10 minutes at the most, read a story to them. God's job is to bring it to the remembrance. That's not mine. I'm not God. I'm just supposed to read the story. But God will do great things. He'll build great faith in your kids. Without faith, you can't please God. Without faith, you can't whip the devil. Where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let's get the word of God into our kids. Amen. Amen, God. Thank you for listening. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.